I had the opportunity to catch up with Graham Sharp in Victoria Falls to talk about Expedition Zimbabwe, which he's a part of, together with a team from Bad Rabbit Studio that is making a 12-part series about the expedition around the country, 5,000 kilometers off-road through some rough terrain and some parts of the country that aren't well known. Here I get a chance to find out more about why he's doing this and also talk about conservation in Zimbabwe, which is something that is close to both of our hearts. Another adventure and another uh, another passion, I guess, the outdoors. Um, Dakar started on the same sort of uh, foundation. But Expedition Zimbabwe is really an initiative that we've come up with uh, between, I guess, the, the first kindling spark <clears throat> through ZPGA uh, and John Stephen Safaris and then uh, an interest in giving the overland and international market something similar to what's on offer in Botswana and Namibia in terms of self-drive, uh, fully contained vehicles, taking people minimal impact into places that you wouldn't typically get to as an FIT traveler coming into a safari camp, flying in by charter aircraft. So yeah, the concept, I guess, uh, 20 years Zimbabwe has been off the radar for a self-drive. Uh, there's been many misconceptions, some of them uh, based on a time in our past when it was a real concern, fuel, currency, uh, police, uh, security, um, and a lot of that needs to be re-evaluated and addressed. Um, and, you know, we've got huge buy-in from ZRP, uh, some parks, Zimbabwe tourism. We see this as a huge opportunity that hasn't been tapped. So in a nutshell, Expeditions Zimbabwe is just highlighting through a, a YouTube series, 12 episodes on uh, all the different attractions to the soft drive market. And yeah, we can get more players in the market if it benefits people who want to run fleets and give the private person who's coming in from Switzerland, Germany, Belgium um, a, a, an insight or some information to help them plan their trip and all the better. So yeah, it's a big PR stunt for, for Zimbabwe. It's a big passion of mine and yeah, whoever wants to get involved and, and share off the energy, then, yeah, the more the better. There's possibly a little bit of um, concern amongst the uh, conservation groupings that, you know, we don't want to uh, advertise too much um, our wild spaces uh, because, you know, we end up with a lot of traffic coming through. If this is another opportunity to, to reinvigorate an area that has traditionally lost its appeal for those other forms of, of tourism, then why can't we have, you know, low volume visitors and vehicles doing four by four routes, getting to places like Chizurira? And coincidentally, Zim Parks just uh, initiated a project, that four by four expedition to Chizurira, which was a Zim Parks and uh, Auto World uh, collaboration. So Zim Parks are onto it. Um, and I think, you know, the only constant is change. And if we can't move with the times and appreciate that, you know, the days of running conservation in the 80s and 90s, we're not in that world anymore. Um, and we need to move with the times. And we, as much as we try and hang on to this old time bastion of this is the way it's always been and this is the way we're doing it, um, then I think you know, we're gonna get caught up. Um, and you know, community tourism is big in Botswana, it's big in Namibia, community run campsites. We're trying to bring value back to areas that are on the periphery of conservation areas and let them see a value. And if you see a vehicle like this arriving, that it gets the same appreciation as a form of uh, community support, I guess. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm not advocating that we have a thousand vehicles driving around in minor pools. So there's a responsibility for all of us to make sure that it doesn't get to that point. And uh, a case of, of a Zimbabwean telling our own story um, and, you know, getting the traffic in, in a controlled manner to support our spaces. You know, get eyes on the Chisarinas. Um, get eyes on those parks that people have never heard of um, and and that way we get to protect our wild spaces and, and leave it up to parks to control the numbers. Graham, um, great to get your insights on that. Um, maybe you could just briefly take us through, I'd encourage everyone to go in and, and, and have a look at the uh, the pictures and join the WhatsApp group that you've, that you've started and obviously watch the episodes that yeah. come out. I think we're close to 5,000 Ks by the time we're done, all going to uh, to plan. 
we've hit 1,300 on the first chapter. So it was starting in uh, Kariba, Eastern Basin, Gachi Gachi. We came through the My Trees project site at Gachi Gachi. They're doing a huge amount of community work, which is really good. And then we came through Matusadana, really encouraging to see the, the Matusadana Conservation Trust between African parks and Zim parks. Massive uh, positives coming out of that. Um, the collaboration, the energy, the focus. Um, the bedrock of that park all being ex parks employees as well. So you know, there's a massive amount of potential in our, our parks um, Ecosystem and with the right leadership and motivations we can turn all our parks into fantastic uh, Continent leading destinations for conservation and then from there we went up into Chisera But we haven't seen anyone since Matusadana. So I think we've been the only two vehicles doing this sort of pursuit 1200 odd Ks um, over a thousand of that has been off-road pressures are huge. I mean, we point nine billion people in Africa today and in 2050 we're two billion. And you look at our natural resources and how they're under pressure now with point nine billion people on this continent. And what, what's going to happen to the Krugers, the Wangis, the Manapools, the Luangwas, Majetis of the world when there's double the population in 20 years time, uh, 25 years time. So, yeah, I mean, we've got to wake up to that reality and it's not alarmist, but that's the reality. It's reality. Yeah. And, you know, You've got to talk the truth and the truth at the moment is the conservation conservation challenges are real and they're mounting and until we start changing our shotgun approach to a more united collaborative voice for conservation um, without being worried about people stealing each other's donors and sensitivities about mm. who's helping who we've got to get in bo on board and, and realize that we've all got to start coming together great message um you know what you're doing for tourism putting the, the country on the map and um, you know the underlying why which is we've got to protect these spaces and um, I love the idea of every drop in the ocean um, comes together and makes a big difference so you know once again congrats on what you're doing um, wish you the wind in your sails on the rest of your journey because I know you're only a, a fifth really a fifth of the way through yep. we'll be following and encouraging everyone else to follow as well yep. um, and uh, yeah, enjoy your R&R &R in, in Vic Falls while yeah. it lasts. So. Thank you. There's a WhatsApp group uh, link going out with daily updates. Um, we're trying our best to get that out. Um, the photos come through as and when possible. Um, but I'm sure that link will be below this video that Luke, Luke puts out. So yeah, join the WhatsApp group, um, follow along. And obviously the main output at the end of this uh, project is going to be the 12 series on, on YouTube. So it's a post-production initiative rather than an in in uh, project production but um yeah thanks very much for everyone um and then just a personal shout out here from the falls to the guys at Lokatula for uh, comping us a couple of nights and then our last night to jim brown and the guys at the palm thank you so much really nice to have a nice comfortable place to sleep after 10 12 days on the road so yeah huge support there and thank you so much and yeah we'll keep the updates coming